Guys, I'm super happy to be here and I want to try to give you every tip and trick in the book on how can you future-proof your career. So coming back to the gentleman's question a few moments ago, before I answer that question, I want to tell you one thing. If you're trying to understand what, who do I have to be in the future to be able to manage in this world that's changing quickly, three things. The professional of the future has to be able to learn, unlearn, and relearn. If you're able to learn, unlearn, and relearn, I can, ju I can just throw you in almost any industry possible and you will bounce on your feet. If you're traumatized every time a little something changes, it's gonna be a rough ride. So learn, unlearn, and relearn. Now, it doesn't mean you have to learn and unlearn something like change procedures 50 times in a day, but sometimes it could be that, depending on the industry you're in. So make yourself flexible as people mentally. And try to, I want to try to prepare you on what to kind of expect because a lot of people are like, whoa, man, like I knew that this part, I, I wasn't expecting that other part. So I want to prepare you for all of it and the stuff you don't maybe always read in the books or you don't understand, like what do they mean when they say that? So attitude is everything. It is everything, nothing else, okay? And I'll tell you why specifically where you are at, most of you here. It's not the only thing, it's everything, okay? Anybody here has ever been a counselor at camp where they have to kind of like take care of kids? Anybody, show of hands, day camp, counselor at camp, okay. Put yourself in the position of you're the counselor. So I wanna put yourself in the head, you're the employer. You're about to hire somebody. Now I'm a counselor, I'm at camp. I wanna get people to go in a circle or get somebody to get arts and crafts supplies from the cabana or something like that. I need to pick one of my kids on my team, whether they're five years old, seven, eight, nine years old. I'm aware they have no management experience. I'm aware of this. Who will I pick? Is it the person who's shown me in their behavior that, okay, you know, like they're aware, they know what's going on. There is like, like they say in Quebecois, allumé. They're aware, they're a little bit responsible. Uh, I've seen how that he or she behaves. I'm like, okay, I can get her to go get these five and tell them, you know, put them in a circle, we're gonna be playing duck, duck, goose or whatever. Or can you please go get the supplies? Who would you pick? So people, the employers, they're not stupid. They know you don't have the experience. What they're trying to answer when they're interviewing you is, are you coachable? Is there a motivation of you wanting to understand? Is there a light in your eyes? And you don't have to have an extroverted personality like me. You can be introverted, but as I'm talking to you, I can see there's a light in your eyes. That's what they're trying to figure out. So they're not, they're not, it's like when you kind of come out of med school, you're not supposed to know to do everything. They know you're going to be in training, but they're like, can I coach this guy? Can I coach this girl? Are they too arrogant? Are they a knowing all? Are, are they a know it all? Am I going to have trouble with this person? So let me tell you the power of attitude. I'm going to show you now a quote that I'm going to read to you. And the quote was put on LinkedIn two weeks ago by a main recruiter in Montreal. Okay. Jessica Glazer, it takes more than a quick glance at a website to land a job. Last week, one of our clients, which is an employer, interviewed three candidates. One completely outperformed at any interview the hiring manager has ever experienced. She wasn't just dressed professional. She didn't just bring her resume and she didn't just review the website. She memorized the core values, adding them in her answers with examples. She initiated a presentation focusing on what she'd lever within the organization to succeed. She went above and beyond what the client has ever seen. As luck would have it, it turns, down a day, it turns out day after the interview, she finds out she's pregnant. Did she land the job? Yes. And why? Because someone who works, like, an, who works for the, like that for an interview will work like that in the office. A workhorse is a workhorse is a workhorse. Some personality traits, traits can't be taught. If you really want a job, you need to step outside your comfort zone and take risks. You have absolutely nothing to lose as you, don't, as you don't have the job anyway. Take the risk and land the job of your dreams. Let's recap. An employer is ready to take on a woman he just found out is pregnant, is gonna have to take sick days off to go see the appointment at the doctor, lose afternoons, lose productivity because you have to go see the doctor, you can't do as much work, and she's gonna be away for a year once she goes on mat leave. He's gonna be paying for that. That is the power of attitude in an interview. That is the power of attitude in an interview. Is that an employer believes so much in you that like, I will bet everything, I want this person and I surely do not want the competition to have her. 
And this was just two weeks ago. It wasn't 2016, it wasn't 2014, it wasn't in the year 2000. This was two weeks ago on LinkedIn on my profile. I follow Jessica, she's one of the main recruiters in Montreal. So just to give you an idea what it can do. And why, I want to remember something, life is really not a math test. We have more and more examples, and I will show you a few of them here, where people on paper should not get the job and they get the job. And there's people on paper that should not be in the NBA and they're in the NBA. They should not be in CEO, you know, like how in God's name did they do that? That is the attitude, okay? So it's the gas in your tank. What, what do you fuel on? What type of environments do you thrive in? So especially at where you're at, because you're not like you have 50 years of experience or anything, they're going to go on your attitude. And you don't need to come in and have a circus show in the interview, but the interview is the honeymoon phase. So if you already look dead at the interview, it's all going downhill from there. Just to be honest here. Okay, the attributes they're looking for, horsepower, okay, that's stamina. Like, I want to learn, I'm in the mood, I want to find out a little bit more. Ownership and pride. They all know you're gonna screw up at some point. I've screwed up in my career. They want to know how do you stand back up? What happens when there's a mistake? Do you like, nah, same shit, different day, excuse my language. Is that your attitude? Or is it like, man, okay, I'm really sorry. I think I missed a few things. Maybe I can sit with my colleague and find out how, how maybe, what are the best practices so I make sure I don't miss that. That's something that's reassuring to an employer. If you don't have pride in who you are and the work you're doing, why are you here? These are things that stay in the back of their mind that they will not tell you out front in an interview. Work ethic. You're always gonna have an opportunity in your career at every single job you have to do a quick buck, not the right way. What are you gonna do? Sometimes nobody's gonna be watching. What are you gonna do? It's gonna be on you. Work ethic is not just when the employer is there, when your boss is there, it's when nobody's watching, how do you behave? And there's always somebody watching. You think there's nobody watching, today with technology there's traces of everything you do everywhere. So when they come on the phone, they're like, hey, that shows Peter took care of that file because it was done in such a beautiful way and it's all super well explained and everything. And then you're like, oh, well, this person, you know, didn't do such a good job. You could tell it's been three accounts I go through and you could tell she took care of him because it's never well done. They noticed that. Your integrity, you are, you are your word. If you lose all your identity, all your papers, and you can't prove who you are tomorrow morning, the only thing people will remember is how did you treat them? Are you somebody of your word? Can they count on you? Can they trust you when you have no papers to show for yourself? Teamwork. Teamwork is not just I'm working with my team. Teamwork is a colleague in another department. It could mean that. A colleague in another department is having trouble. She needs somebody to help her with a task. And I say, I could go home. But what if I stayed an extra 15 minutes and say, hey, would you like some help? And you start bridging connections with people. You never know who you might need at your work. It might be the one person you hate the most. You might need them six months down the line. Teamwork is not just working within your team. It's working with other teams. It's learning how to play well with others. We can see in politics today that a lot of people don't know how to play well with others and they're having trouble. You can't be an influencer if you don't know how to play well with others. That's going to be a problem. So these are really important. Before the inter interview, understand the lay of the land, the job offer, the company, the company culture. Always have a notepad, print the job offer. What do I mean by that? What do you guys bring when you go to an interview? Anybody right now? Resume. Printed copy? Yeah. Okay, what else do you bring at an interview? Depends. Okay, good. Anything else? Okay, so I'll tell you how I do it. So I'll tell you what worked. You do what you want with the information. I print the job offer. And so let's say the job offer is marketing coordinator or whatever it is. I take a, I highlight things that are important to me. Okay, we'll have to use the tools to attain that. Da, da, da. I highlight tools. Uh, we'll need to uh, attain the objectives by end of year, December 31. I hi highlight objective. We'll need to do some light travel. I highlight travel. And then I, I put question marks. What type of tools? Objectives, uh, uh, do I have a say in my own objectives or are they already set for me? Traveling, excuse me, traveling, am I traveling to the US? Am I traveling to Canada? Am I traveling once a month, once a, once a year? What does it mean? I come up with that and I always have a notepad. And I'll tell you why you need the notepad even in a digital time, okay? So I'll tell you exactly how I do. I get to the interview, I'm facing the interviewer. I have everything in a small binder. I don't ask any permission. 
okay? So I'm like, excuse me, just, just need a second. I just want to set out. I get my resume printed in front of me. I have the job offer with highlights and notes, so it shows that I did my homework and I have some questions, and I have the notepad. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready. And the guy's like, whoa, okay. Do you think I need to convince this man, and I didn't barely said a word, that I'm organized? You shouldn't have to explain certain aspects of your personality. It's kind of like having class. If you need to tell people that you have class, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. It should show by the way you talk, the way you speak, the way you dress. You shouldn't have to tell certain things. So instead of convincing people, I'm like this, I'm like that, they will see it by the essence of who you are. So I come and I do all of this. And then they'll ask, and I'll, get, I'll share with you some cool interview questions, okay? So that's before the interview. Always have the notepad, why? They might ask you a lot of things that you're not ready for. They might say, uh, can you jot down my assistant Sylvie's email? I want you to email me a portfolio of what you did last year on this, a paragraph, I want to see how you write, and da 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 something else. By the way, also, um, we have a little sync I said, a happy hour with the team. I'd like you to come and join us. Please note down the address. Also, uh, can you uh, email this other person something else? You're at an interview, you are nervous. Not everything can get in your head, you're gonna freak out, okay? So have a notepad and they're actually impressed when you come in with a notepad. This is an example, don't come with a cheesy one from the dollar store, but this is like at Bureau en it's like $10. Just come with something that like, looks respectable. Have a pen that works. Don't take the only one in the home that doesn't work and then you're like, geez, ugh, what are the chances? Okay, so when you come prepared like that, it's like, okay, excuse my language, I'm dealing with a badass. Because half the people don't want to even do that minimum effort. Do you follow me? Any questions? How to sell yourself, okay? You have to try to figure it out before getting to the interview. Who are you at your core? What do your friends say that you are known for? What is your, oh, you're the guy who always fixes this, you're the person who always gets us all organized, oh, you're the person who's able, every problem we have, you have an innovative way to find a solution. Who are you? What type of environments do you thrive in? So me, I can't be in a slow environment. I start to become kind of a bit depressed. I need things that are fast moving, there's a lot of action, my knowledge has to be tested. This is what I am at my core. When, you know, the crap hits the fan big time, this is when I'm at my best. Who are you at your best? And if you want an indication of that, because you're probably questioning yourself sometimes, is the activities you're interested in, the jobs or tasks or projects you participated in up to your life today, they all have a, a, uh, a common thread. What is that thread? So for me, I had to do a lot of introspection and I like coming in at situations that are super disorganized so I can come in, clear things up, get everybody moving like, like it's a well-oiled machine. That's me. Maybe you're more of an artsy person that likes to discover a different angle of things that somebody didn't, didn't, didn't realize what it was before. You all have talents. We as a society are gonna be majorly screwed if you don't use your talents because we need you. We really need you big time. We can't figure everything out on our own. So who are you at your core? What is your specialty? What are some of your biggest successes? Are you the person, the MVP player, where you deliver just when we least expect it, when we want you to deliver? Because sometimes in your career, you're gonna deliver one minute late. You're gonna deliver one minute early and it won't matter. You needed to deliver at that specific moment. Kind of like at the Olympics. If you don't make things count when they need to count, it's gonna be a learning experience, you're not gonna die, but it just won't be the same than when you deliver when you are supposed to deliver. Okay, how do you tell your story? Do you guys have trouble, just to, you know, lifting your hands up, do you guys have trouble sometimes when they ask you, tell me about you, you know, uh, you know what are you all about, or something like that, or do you have trouble, like lift, just put your hands up if you have trouble sometimes, how am I can, can convey who I am? Okay, excellent. I had the same problem. Why is this guy on the screen right now? Herman Madrozo finishes last, this is these Olympics, at the men's 15K cross country at the Winter Olympics. This is him arriving. These are all the other colleagues who finished, okay, way before him, 26 minutes. He came in 26 minutes late from the last person before him. This is how he's celebrating. How can somebody who comes at the end celebrate this way? Maybe there's a story behind that. Maybe the story is you just learned how to ski six months ago. 
and that's why he gets that welcome. He got a standing ovation. You all have a story. Even when you're like, listen, I was the last one, but I want to tell you I hustled. I didn't win anything, but what I learned the most about that experience is A, B, C, and today there's things I would do differently. That's a story. I don't care if you lost. I just want to know, did you learn something about it? Did you grow from it? Did you realize that, hey, I found out five methods that really don't work, and I know now that I'm never going to explore with those again because I need to move on to another method that actually works. Tell me there's something about you. Because a guy who celebrates like that, like this guy looks like he's, he's, he's the puppet, like he's the man with the plan over here, okay? So is he the only one? Probably not, because Olympic Sydney, 2000. This guy's swimming with a Michael, Michael Phelps, same time. He's from uh, Equatorial Guinea, his name is Eric, and so he's right there at the, uh, he had never been in a pool until a few months before the Olympics. He gets a standing ovation. So I don't want you to focus on what you don't have, okay? And especially today's world, even the, the, the nuttiest things are becoming viral. Focus on what's your story behind that. I came here, I didn't know any languages, I hustled like that, I did this, I, I tried to help here, then I applied to this other company, I met with an amazing man, became my mentor, uh, I learned about this, there was a field I didn't know anything about, I went gung-ho, let me, teach me, I'm here to, I'm willing to learn. People are trying to see, do you have will to learn? You know, what's burning inside of you? Like, show me something so I want to say, I want to take you on and I want, because there are people you will meet in your life and your career at different stages that will take you to a stratospheric level if you are ready. If you're not ready, it's like you give a million bucks to a five-year-old. They don't know what to do with it. Who are you really? You can take a picture of this slide if you want. This is a free test that you can do that will really help you. You know when you're looking for words, you're like, how am I gonna describe myself and everything? I'm just, I'm gonna come back to the screen, okay? Just give me a second. You will be one of these 49 archetypes. This test will tell you which one you are. And you'll get a description and you can even put it in Google and click on images, say, okay, like me, I'm the kind of stuff, insightful, distinguished, and in the know. My main qualities is prestige and I communicate with passion. Can you tell? So which one are you? This will help kind of put some words on it. So I'll go back to the screen if you want to take a picture of this. Are we good? Okay. This can help you tell your story about what you're about. Yeah. Do you want one more? Okay, go ahead. Last three seconds. Go ahead, people. Thank you. Excellent. We're good. I have the approval. Excellent. During the interview, arrive 10 minutes early, cell phone on silence. Why silence? When you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody in a room, everybody can hear the vibrate, everybody. So every time you start buzzing, first of all, you lose concentration on the question they just asked you. It takes you another 60 seconds to concentrate back again on what you were saying because they can tell you you lost the train of thought. Everybody knows, everybody can hear the vibrate. So let's just get out of the, the denial of that, put it on silence. This is, it could be a beginning of a career that's going to give you hundreds of thousands of dollars for the next 10, 20 years. Put the darn thing for 60 minutes on silence, not on vibrate, because everybody notices when you get a tick, and, and even if you don't get a tick and you kind of slightly lean towards your pocket and you're trying, we notice all of it. Nobody's stupid around the table, so just do it to make it. You have seven seconds for a first impression. Okay, the impression. What people are looking for, it's not perfection. They're looking for coherence. If there's a woman in front of you that's wearing a coat that has chipped nail polish, she's chewing gum like a cow, and she has a Louis Vuitton bag, how many seconds before you start doubting that the Louis Vuitton bag is fake? <laughs> it's not coherent. It's not coherent. I'll give you another example. You go to the dentist's office, and you know they're going to use gloves when they're trying to clean your mouth and everything. The, na the nails are super dirty and black. You know they're gonna use gloves. You should be safe. How long before the hamster starts going and you start thinking, are the instruments sterilized? When was the last time he cleaned the counter? Anything that is not coherent in your image and starts leaving doubts in my mind, I start thinking, what else is not coherent about that person? So the way you dress has an importance. It does mean you need to dress for $600, 
I'm just saying have a proper appearance. It has importance. Hygiene, you know, how, how you appear, you know, whatever it is, just come in it, in your best, because you're basically telling me I care about my image or I don't give a crap about my image. This is what you're telling me. Fair? That's the truth. So the whole thing about don't judge a book by its cover, at the beginning, everybody judges everything by its cover. Are we good? Okay. Bring a printed copy of your resume and the job offer. Don't let your body language sabotage your interview. All right. How do we sit in an interview? Get this. A lot of times, as you're getting comfortable in the interview, you start like this, and then by the, by the time you're like, you're almost like, yo, what's up? Okay? So an easy trick, do it if you want to, is you, you sit your butt in the crease of the chair at the very end, and when you lift up, you naturally will always stand, be looking straight and elongated, which is just in a more alert position. Because the, lo the more you're further away from the back of the chair, the more you start slouching and, and you're paused and you're having trouble like maintaining it. Make it easy, just get your butt back there and when you stay there, you're not gonna be moving too much. Cool? Dress for success. We have enough Pinterest, Facebook, a million and one articles out there to let you know how to dress for a job. Dress for success. Put the chances are, I don't care if you have a quirky um, a haircut or whatever it is, just the rest of you, like just dress properly for the interview and just uh, have an somebody I'm like, I could trust that person. Great questions to ask. Okay, these questions, you do not ask them at the beginning of the interview. You have to build rapport with the interviewer. You have to get a comfort, okay? So what I like to know is they're gonna say, we want you to attain this level and call these many people. Besides metrics, how well, sir, do you measure your success? I wanna know what are the intangibles that are important for him. Is it relationship building? Is it teamwork? How else do we measure success? What can I do for you, sir, in the first 90 days to make your life easier? I've tested these questions with VPs. I've tested these questions with people lower than VPs. And every time they're like, we've never had somebody ask us these questions. What, and when you're comfortable with a person, you say, hey, Dennis, what kept you in this company after 15 years? Why are you still here today? The way you ask the question is also as important as the question itself. What vision do you have for your department? I want to know what's on the guy's radar, the girl's radar. We want to expand into another country. We want to add 20 people to our department. What is it so I can be aligned with where they're going? What would the person in this role prior to me tell me is the most challenging part? They'll tell you, listen, it's really hard because you have to deal with seven different freaking departments. So you need to communicate with everybody. Okay, you have a heads up. You're being prepared. What else is good for you? Uh, what impact would I have on the team when I get hired? Okay, this is, you're trying to find out what's important for them. Because you think you know what's important for them. You can't influence somebody if you don't know what influences them. So you're asking questions to understand what's important for this person. Is it just numbers? Is it people? It's a mix of both. Is it that we become the best department? What is it? So you can align yourself and you yourself understand, am I right fit with this person? How are you gonna know if you're a right fit if you're not asking questions? So these help you find this out. After the interview, you follow up with anything they ask you to follow up with. Don't forget, because this is the first test. Are you reliable on the small things? Test number one, are you reliable on the small thing? If you can get back to me on three little tasks I ask you, how in God's name do I wanna put you in charge of my department? Process the feedback that you receive. So you can ask at the end, okay, I really I enjoyed this interview. Uh, do you have any idea when can I hear back from you? You know, we have a couple of other people to interview, so give us about two, three weeks. I go, okay, so about end of February. Yeah, sure, no problem. So can I touch back base with you if I don't hear from you? Sure, no problem. They like initiative. Follow up with a thank you email. I don't care if you build a thank you template, but change the first name, that you send to all your interviewers, but that's just a classy way. It just sets you apart really quickly. And if you have an email, for Pete's sake, sexyfox69 at hotmail.com does not work anymore. Bigstud at gmail.com doesn't work either. Okay, get yourself, get yourself, you wanna be taking, you wanna be taken seriously, take yourself seriously. Nobody's gonna take your, nobody's gonna take you seriously if you don't take yourself seriously. So get a proper email that has something with your name, either, even if there's a 01 at the end because you have a common name or whatever it is. And always continue to apply to other jobs. There's some people, they get a new email, they forget to check it. it. Happened to one of my clients. A month later, she had four job offers waiting because her hot, the hot fox at 69, hotmail, whatever, she was checking it. She forgot that email, there was four job offers waiting for her. 
So check your emails regularly if you create a new one. And get back to people in a time. And if you can't get back to them, you can say, Hi, Steve, I got your email. Thank you very much. I'm just traveling with my family uh, for vacation. Can I get back to you next week? Tell them that at least you read it. Nobody's writing you so that you never respond to them. So that's really important. These are just little things that are free, okay? Let's remember, free. I didn't ask you to buy a thing so far. Free and they set you apart that quickly. Okay, you got the job. Workplace mentality versus student mentality. All right, being hungry. People are looking to see, are you hungry to learn? Are you hungry to understand? Even if you're overwhelmed, you can say, listen, you gave me a lot of information. I am overwhelmed a little bit today. People are trying to understand if you have that. Do you have some reactions out of things? Always ask and observe. You can never ask enough questions. Nobody will, nobody's gonna uh, hit you on the hands for asking questions ever. Observe what's happening around. Okay, let me tell you. You're gonna have jobs where you're gonna learn exactly what not to do as a leader because you're gonna have a crappy leader. You will have jobs where you're gonna see people who do not have a leadership title but they lead within the company. You will have jobs where you are gonna find out how to negotiate certain things. Every time you think you come in a job and you're like, oh, I'm probably gonna learn ABC, you might learn XYZ and it wasn't on your radar. Be open to that. Observe how people are navigating in the company. Who is it that always gets things done? Who is it that everybody's always against? Why are they always against them? Is it how they communicate? Is it their way? You're always, like, it's almost like becoming a sociologist. It's really like being in observation mode. You just landed on a new planet. You're just observing how people are interacting. What's the culture in the company? What are the, uh, uh, they say in French, les non-dits, the, the things that are not written on the website about the company that you have to watch for. So people will teach you stuff, and I promise you, I promise you, if they feel there's a sparkle in your eye and you're really, really wanting to learn, they will take you under their wing because they are also hungry to, to transmit their information to somebody else. Always watch your 360 circle. 360 circle is every single person you interact with at the company. I'm talking about the secretary, it could be the security guard, it could be the person who opens her door, it could be the person at the law department. When you're new, they're gonna be checking up with everybody who interacted with you how things are going, and it is normal. It's not to catch you in a big trouble or anything like that, it is normal. They're hiring somebody, they're spending money. They would like to feel that they're spending money on somebody that has potential to grow in the company. So they could be, oh, you know, uh, he asked me a few questions on that, but we really see that they're willing to understand and everything. Oh yeah, she came to see me, she wanted to have more information on this, no problem. But they're gonna ask everybody you work for and do not even be naive in thinking that it will not happen. Everybody who's interacted with you is like, hey, how's it going with them? How's it going with her? How was the training this morning? Yeah, yeah, I know she started three weeks ago. How's it going so far? Any, any red flags we should be aware of? Everybody will ask. Don't even think it's not gonna happen. It is happening, it will continue to happen more and more because people don't wanna waste their money. If you're not a right fit in the company, it's okay. Best of luck to you, move on to the next company. We also need to move on to the next candidate. Fair enough? Eating out and meeting clients. They might take you out to lunch with a client to see how you behave at the restaurant, how you treat the waiters. Okay. Anybody go to the restaurant and there's so many glasses and plates, you don't know anymore where your, where your bread plate is and where your glasses should be on the left or your right. Anybody ever happened this? Because this has happened to me, Ben. Okay, I will give you a trick. It is the easiest thing. So imagine me, I'm sitting at the table. So everybody do this. Okay, the bread plate B is always on your left and the drinks are always on your right. Okay? B and D, the bread plate is always on your left and the D drinks are always on your right. Hey, I know, wasn't it worth it just for that? I know what you're thinking. I'm telling you, okay. Other thing, you're sitting at the table, you're with five people, you do not start eating until everybody got their plate. If you need follow-ups on this, if you look on YouTube, there's etiquette, you etiquette, etiquette, whatever it is, and they'll show you when there's a lot more plates or whatever what to do. But if you want to go in the big leagues, you need to know how to eat, how to eat at a table. 
what to do, what not to do, not to order the most expensive wine. And if you're not sure of something, you wait and see how other people are reacting or what they're ordering to kind of take your cue from there. But they can take you out and see how you react with people, with suppliers. At the Christmas party, are you getting drunk like crazy and dancing on the table? You can ruin your career in two seconds. You can ruin a long-standing career in two seconds at a Christmas party. I've seen it happen to people that are really high up in companies. Ask for feedback. Don't need to wait for the evaluation. Just say, hey, my boss is Ryan. I'm like, hey, Ryan, so how's it going so far? Is there anything you want me to work on? Anything you feel I'm missing? Very openly. He goes, oh, no, no, actually, you know, this and they'll tell you right away. If they sense genuineness in you, they want to help you. I promise you they want to help you, but just show me something that you, you're actually interested, so I want to help you. Or like Jerry Maguire says, help me help you. Okay, so really. Failure. Failure is inev inevitable, but suffering is optional. You will fail at your career. You will do a big screw up. You might get fired. You will get, your position will be abolished. It could be a million and one things. You decide how long you're gonna fail. You really decide how long you're gonna fail. You wanna, you wanna go whip yourself psychologically for the next six months? Go right ahead, but we just lost six months because you're doing that. I've had all sorts of ups and highs in my careers and in the last six years my position has been abolished just because the market is changing very quickly, people are hiring quickly, they're abolishing. But this is me, okay? I'm telling you, my position has been abolished six times and I just started a new amazing job right now. And how you stand up, they watch. And it says everything about you. It says everything, actions over words, it says everything about you. Failing versus being a failure. You can fail at something, it doesn't mean that your entire career and you're the crappiest person in the world and you're not worth it, that it's over. No, there's been so many people who failed, lost millions, had I don't know how many different careers, and they're always like, they reinvent themselves, and they reinvent, it is, it might happen to you. Do not go in a hole and don't park there in your misery. You're going to be fine. I promise you, you're going to survive. You're going to be fine. You're going to see on the other side of the light. There is always a rainbow, but it will happen at some point. But how you get up and people are always watching you. There's something like now we're in the spirit of the Olympics of when somebody falls and they fight and they're in pain and they still finish their competition. There's something that needs to be said about that. It tells me so much about the character. I don't need to know anything else. So you're going to fall. Fine, people are watching. How are you gonna get up? And you're gonna be no different a person than if one day you're a parent and your kids see you fall and they see how their dad or their mom gets up. People are always watching you. So you have like this and it's great news because you get to show them so much amazing stuff about you. Because you guys are doing so much more than a lot of the stuff we were doing. And I, I always like, I'm always the first one defending sometimes when they say, oh, the millennials these days. I'm like, listen, the mil millennials didn't have it easy. They had parents who went through burnouts and divorces and had toxic uh, bosses at work and they saw their parents suffer and now they don't want that. So they're reevaluating a couple of things. So like, oh, okay, we never saw it that way. Yeah, exactly. So each generation has their own thing. And when you go up in a company, there's another saying that says, for every level, there's a new devil. What that means is that every time you think, hey, I finished that challenge, I'm moving on to the higher grounds, I don't need to deal with these people, there's gonna be a new challenge. Every time you go up, it's like the magnifier glass is bigger. Your qualities are enhanced, and your weaknesses are enhanced. So if you were a crappy communicator before, now that you're a VP, the crappy communication shows really well and really badly in front of people. And the impact is higher. You wanna be in the big leagues, there's bigger prizes, you make millions, kind of like being in the NBA or whatever. You're not, no longer in the little leagues, yeah. Every mistake you do costs bigger because now you're on the international sphere. For every level, there's a new devil. There's something different you have to deal with. It will never go away. But there's prizes that you will never get that you didn't get at lower levels. Be careful with that. Your career is like indoor rock climbing. It's no longer going up and up and up. Sometimes in your career, you're gonna do a side move to do 10 upper moves. Sometimes you're gonna go one step down to do eight, ste eight, step eight steps up. So the career is no longer, oh, just go up the, you know, higher, you know, the hierarchy ladder, the corporate ladder, let's just go. No, 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 it's really changing today. 
people are jumping from industry to industries. I've done many industries. I've done customer service, I've done commercial real estate, I've been a financial advisor, I've been in wealth management, and now I'm a, a senior a manager for Fortune 100 companies at a tech, uh, tech company in Ontario that has clients all over the world. Why? Because I was able to jump and convince the interviewer every time, listen, I'm not perfect, I don't have everything you want, but there's nobody in that company that will outwork me. There's nobody, I give you my word. And I applied myself to that. So you can jump on left and right as you wish, and you have that option. Back in the day, it was just like, you were seen like it was taboo, you couldn't do that move. You couldn't start from scratch anymore. Today, we do it a little bit more. Okay, we need to produce people who know how to act when they're faced with situations which they were not specifically prepared for. Stop thinking that you need to be prepared for every situation perfectly. I was paranoid with that all my life. I was like, I'm, not, I'm just not prepared. I wasn't equipped for that specific task. Okay, I was equipped for a million and other tasks that hone skills that are preparing me for this situation. It's not all going to be ready and nice and cookie cutter the way you want it all the time. There are times you're going to have to make decisions on little information. You're going to, you're going to say, with the information I have right now, it's not a lot. With this information, there's a lot missing. This is the best decision I can give. And that's okay. But don't beat yourself up on it. You're going to want to beat yourself up on a lot of things that are not going your way. Take it easy, guys. Everybody's doing mistakes. They just want to see, are you learning from them? Are you getting back up from it? Because you matter, you're important. We can't do this without you. Social media, the benefits. Okay. It's a way of shaking hands virtually. It's a way for people to see what you're all about. It's a magnifying glass to who you already are. Okay. You can do your personal branding. You can post on LinkedIn. And I'm going to show you a couple of uh, profiles after. Just to be, it helps you stay current in your field and what's going on. Okay. But this is the benefits, the mistakes. Okay, complaining about the boss, the alcohol picks, all that. Every single recruiter moving forward is looking through your social media with no exception. It is in their task list. I'm not even at the beginning of my career and my boss told me after he goes, I looked at your LinkedIn, I looked at your Twitter, I looked at everything you did and I was like, I, I saw that you brand yourself really well and I was impressed with your LinkedIn. That's what he told me and I was like, he looked at my social media like really like I'm at I thought like it was just more the younger people coming in no 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 everybody's looking at it now you're like hey I'm cool I know who I'm friends with it's not a problem no 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 the recruiter can be a 28 year old woman she has a younger sister who happens to be best friend with your friend's cousin who tags you in pictures that are a little bit questionable and she could just go on her Facebook and see your pictures everybody knows everybody do what you will with that information. Everybody knows everybody. The recruiter, the assistant of the recruiter, the young gal, oh yeah, oh yeah, she's friends with my friend Melissa. Let me check Melissa. Hey Melissa, can you check that person's account? Can you tell me is there anything questionable? As simple as that, easy peasy. Social media has made it even easier for us to find out more about inf information about people. If it's cool information, you are surfing and good luck to you. If it's not cool information, be careful or readjust your profiles. But people are always checking, yes? What happens if the only social media you have is LinkedIn? Because like, I'm a personal person. I okay. never had Facebook. Okay. Okay. I'm a principal. Make like, sure, that can reflect yeah. badly on me? No, it, no, it doesn't them. reflect badly, or but at least have something. Yeah. A LinkedIn, no problem. <laughs> no, I have a LinkedIn. Really. No, but have something written about it. I'm going to show you that. Um, six degrees of separation, I talked about that. Make sure that it doesn't contradict your LinkedIn with your resume. Be careful what you post, okay? There, you wanna rant about something that's upsetting you? No problem, there's a way of ranting. If you're angry at the world, do I necessarily want you in my company? I'm not sure. What would you do if this was your hard-earned money that you're spending and trying to find somebody? What would you do? Just, put, just ask that question. What would you do if it's your hard-earned money? Do you, wanna, do you want to hire somebody who might be problematic and you're gonna have to manage or not? Why do we network? You network for reputation, for visibility, referrals, new business. Always network, never network when you need it. You're screwed. Network, never network when you need it. Always try to find events you're going to just to get to know somebody who will introduce you to somebody to somebody else. Always, always. Okay, this is, well, networking helps you build a lot of international relationships and everything, but this is, I wanna pass through this, there's, okay. So I wanna show you a LinkedIn very quickly. <coughs> Okay, LinkedIn and chats. Not sure 
So for some, we, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, wait, can I take it at the end if you don't mind? I just want to make sure. What, how are we doing on time? Five minutes? Okay. So this is not loading for some reason, but whoever you are on LinkedIn, in your header, there should be words that say what you're about. Sales and business, marketing, give me some keywords so we can find you. Okay, what are the keywords that we can find you, okay? In the summary, it should answer the question, what makes you tick? We know you don't have experience. Tell me what are your interests. Tell me what you worked for at when you were a teenager. Customer service for over five years. I worked in the retail industry. I worked here, I worked there. Tell me something about yourself, just to give me an idea. So for some reason, it's not. Yeah, it's still loading. Okay, career lessons. I want to tell you what I learned that I really wish if you could bypass that, that would be great. Don't put your ego in front of your paycheck. Ego never works in your career, rarely works. Day you're a CEO, we'll talk about it, but ego just doesn't work when you're negotiating for something. Show, to people, show people how you want to add value. Manage your enthusiasm. That was a problem with me. I was always enthusiastic all the time. I was like, let me spread the sunshine. People need to see it. That's cool. It depends on what situation. And a boss once told me, she goes, your, ex your excess of enthusiasm is hiding the deep reflections you made about a file. And you're so enthusiastic, you give the impression like you didn't see some important things. And if you could doze it in certain situations, you have more credibility. <clears throat> Be open. You always end up where you expected, but not the way you thought you were going to get there. Have a plan, that's cool, it just it needs to be tweaked. Moving on to the other point. A plane going from New York to LA, 50% of the time, if you don't touch the plane, do nothing, it's 50% of the time it's off course. Unless the pilot is doing adjustments to the plane. That's the only way it lands where it's supposed to land. So you're gonna have to do little tweaks and adjustments in your career, it's normal. Don't worry about it. You're not like going against your grain or defying your original plan. You're gonna have to tweak and be flexible. The quality of your life is directly related to the quality of your questions. You can say, why am I not good at this? Which is a crappy question. Or you can say, what are some cool opportunities I'm missing to get better at that? And your brain will get to work to answer that question. Be careful the questions you ask for because sometimes they debilitate you. Danger of building walls. There's gonna be a time in your career where somebody's gonna hurt you, somebody's gonna betray you. It's not gonna go the way you think. And sometimes it could be the person you least expect. And so be careful when you build walls because the walls that protect you are also the walls that imprison you. Be really careful with that. You're gonna to wanna to be bitter and you're gonna to wanna to throw a fit and it's unfair and all of that. Just be careful with that. The most important thing in communication is to hear what isn't said. Some people will communicate verbally and you're like, but I gave that person what they want, I don't understand. Look at the nonverbal. There's something they're not telling you that's really bothering them. This will give you an edge in understanding what's going on around you. Don't just go for communication. What are you pretending not to know? There's so many times I was in problems, and I was like, geez, I don't know what's going on with there. A boss would always say to me, he was Zena, what are you pretending not to know? And that question was like, okay, this person is really pissed off because of something we did a week ago, and she's just having trouble swallowing it. She was exactly, How, what are you gonna do about it now? So that's a great question. Be scared of what you won't become. Please, please, you have been given God-given abilities. We need them. You cannot go to waste. You cannot go to waste. It's a tragedy if you go to waste. That you're given these abilities and we can't use them as people, as society, and benefit from them, it's a tragedy. We need it, you need to be on the game for this. Our perspective creates our perception. Giraffe and turtle. There's gonna be people in your life that are always gonna be down there, and I'm not talking about uh, you know, being poor or whatever, I'm talking about the, the level of who they are. And so that's a turtle. You're a giraffe. If a giraffe bends over to stay at the level of the turtle, I don't know if you know this, because the giraffe has a long neck and the blood goes up to the brain, the giraffe, if she stays down where a level where she does not belong, the giraffe will have a stroke. Sometimes when you stay too long where you don't belong, you will have a stroke metaphor. Be careful to know where you don't belong anymore and it's time to say, I, ca I can't be down there. This is another level. This is low. It could be people are always gossiping in the office. It could be anything. Just don't be, the, don't be the giraffe who's bending over to accommodate everybody and you get the stroke. 
uh, you don't go through the process, okay, if you don't go through a process to get it, you don't have the power to keep it. You want really big things and when you get them, you're like, oh, I didn't realize I wasn't equipped for this. I wasn't prepared for that. So be careful with that. And what I mean by that is hustle the way through. It's longer, it sucks, and trust me, I'm super impatient and I wish I could go forward much quicker, but I can't. And I was so happy sometimes when I'm like, man, I'm happy I didn't get that promotion sooner because I would have screwed it up big time. So there's a reason it takes nine months to have a baby. There's a reason why the seasons have a certain timing. There's the essence of timing. Even if right now it doesn't make sense to you and you look around, you're like, well, I'm smarter than him and her. I should be up there. You're gonna have those moments, you will. There's an essence of timing. Give yourself time to get there so that once you're there, you can go and really uh, propel yourself to another level. If you don't know your why, your tongue will, keep you at pla will take you places where your character can't keep you. <coughs> why are you doing this? Like, I love to add value to a company. I like to see things moving forward. Why are you doing what you do? Try to figure that out as you're going. You don't need to have all the answers today, but I just wanted to give you some tips and tricks on what works, what doesn't work for the interview and everything that you do. And don't forget, when on paper it's going to look like you don't win, life is really not a math test. You can actually win and kill it. So don't, we, we live in a world of numbers and graphs and we're like, hey, the statistics show that they shouldn't win. You watch the Super Bowl, you watch whatever you want. We have a million examples of people on paper that shouldn't have made it and they made it. And you are these people also. So when it happens, you're like, man, I, don't, I shouldn't even put any effort. Think again. And I hope, just with my little 90 minutes nuggets here, it just gave you some things to think about or helped you to kind of attack your career, just give you some tips and tricks, just to attack things and not waste time on things that don't work. And thank you so much for your attention.